Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing the best designer fragrances for fall winter. And most of these are available at Sephora if you wanna take advantage of the Sephora holiday savings event. But if you are feeling a bit tapped out and you would rather wait, there is another opportunity coming up in December for a great discount. It's the Fragrance for All event back again this year. 20% off all full-size fragrances, that's for all beauty insiders, and it is a one-time use coupon. Somebody commented on one of my other videos or posts and they mentioned that in Canada it was only 15% last year. So I'm not sure what the difference is between US and Canada, if that was maybe just last year, if it's the same this year. So take that into consideration. It might be worth calling your local Sephora, but at least in the US, I know it is definitely 20% off full-size fragrances. First up, we have the latest addition to my fragrance collection. This is YSL Lieb Le Parfum. I just unboxed this during my last Sephora haul. So I decided to take advantage, get my 20% off. It smells incredible. This was love at first sniff in store. I had heard so many people raving about this particular concentration. And I do think that whether you have been a longtime lover of Lieb or maybe it hasn't really been your cup of tea, this is worth seeking out because it smells very warm, dreamy. It's a very sweet vanilla, perfect for fall winter. It's described as a luxurious, warm, and spicy interpretation of the original Lieb. It's a bold, long-lasting floral fragrance enriched with fresh lavender, orange blossom, and a rare warm saffron accord. You can see the juice has that deep caramel amber color, so it tells you right away this is more intense than the original. And I do love the bottle. I think it looks so classy, so chic. I'm very happy I finally found a fragrance from the line that I really love. It almost smells like burnt sugar, like a, a caramel. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit floral, but to me this is so creamy and delicious. I pick up on a lot of vanilla and it's not cloying, it's not too sweet. A little lavender, but not too clean and soapy. This is very fall, winter, warm, cozy, snuggle on the couch. It's date night, it's a night out. But I don't think it is too bold. I just love this fragrance so much. I would wear this every day. In the right climate, I would wear this. This could be your signature scent. It smells delicious. I would say the original Lieb kind of has that My Way, Valentino, Voce Viva, Prada Paradox-esque scent to it. You know, there is a group of designer fragrances that all smell similar-ish. There are differences between them, but you know the ones I'm talking about. The original Lieb falls into that category, and I think maybe that's part of the reason why it never really spoke to me, even though I do really like some of the others that I named. This smells very different to me. I will admit, I'm kind of cheating by including this on the list. I would not say this is exclusively fall-winter, but I would say it's one of the best designer fragrances available at Sephora. It happens to be one of my current favorites, so we're gonna talk about it. Indulge me. This is C. Passione. They called it C. Passione whenever I was in store. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. It's from Armani Beauty. In my head, I call it C. Passione Eau de Parfum, and it comes in this beautiful, bold red bottle. It's kind of a lipstick red, and I feel like this color, this exact shade, just perfectly captures the fragrance. It's kind of bold but sexy, sensual. It's a very luscious, fruity floral, but it is very warm as well. So I do think it works for fall, winter, but I would wear this spring, summer. I would wear this all the time. This is my new favorite designer fragrance at Sephora. Keynotes include sparkling pear, rose, and a woody vanilla base. I do get a little bit of that sparkling pear. It is a little bit fruity, but then the woody vanilla, it's not too woody. I would just say vanilla. Just a delicious, mouth-watering, fruity vanilla fragrance. Smells a little bit exotic, but warm, sensual, and it's just perfect. It's a little bit fresh at the same time, and almost a bit aquatic. I would say this is probably similar to Ocean de Joa, maybe a little bit less aquatic or maybe a little sweeter. Si Passion has more of that warm, creamy vanilla. It's just a beautiful fragrance. This is daytime, evening, anytime the mood strikes. 
This is going to be my easy grab and go. I would put this in the same category as a Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper 25 from Kayali, which is another one of my favorite, just grab and go. I wanna smell good for the day. I need a mood boost. You know, I'm running errands, doing whatever I'm doing for the day, and I just want to feel a bit like a princess. You know, treat myself to a beautiful, delicious fragrance. That will be this. I don't know why I couldn't appreciate it before because this checks all of the boxes for me and it's become one of my current favorite fragrances. What can I say? Our tastes change like that. Sometimes we love a fragrance, other times we can't stand it. Sometimes we have to revisit an old favorite and that's what happened here. Here's another new favorite and this just launched in 2022, Prada Paradox. I love this bottle. I think this looks so cool. This is the attention grabber, but then you smell the fragrance inside and it smells amazing. Another one that I wouldn't necessarily categorize as just fall winter, I think this is going to be probably their best-selling fragrance. I would say this is a classic signature scent worthy fragrance. And this is my pick for anyone out there who loves fall winter fragrances, but does not want to smell like a fireplace or tree bark because it's a little bit sweet and it's floral, but it also smells kind of fresh and cooling. A lot of jasmine, neroli bud and white amber doesn't have a ton of vanilla, but it still smells kind of warm, but not warm, creamy vanilla, just a hint of warmth. So I would say this is more of a daytime fragrance. I can see all of the fashionistas wearing this. I think it will be one of the it fragrances for 2022. I already know this is going to be on everybody's gift list, their wish list for the holidays this year. There's so much buzz and excitement and people are talking about it, not because it's the most unique fragrance they've ever smelled, but because it's just the overall mood, the overall vibe that this fragrance gives off. I think part of that is the bottle. People want a piece of the Prada logo. Prada is a very hot brand right now, and I do think it's worth it. It's a fun fragrance to wear. For all of my warm and sweet gourmand lovers, I recommend Princess. It says, I don't need a prince by my side to be a princess from Killian. It's the Eau de Parfum in the brand new, bit more basic, a bit more boring bottle, but it smells amazing. This is definitely one of my favorite fall fragrances. This feels very fall winter to me. You definitely get that little pop, a little zip from the ginger. But then as it dries down, it's a lot of green tea and then that delicious, slightly candy sweet marshmallow. It's not a creamy, deep, moody vanilla. It's a little bit light and fluffy. So I think this kind of works daytime, evening, anytime. So it's marshmallow without the campfire. It has that sweetness and then the green tea gives it a little kind of exotic, what are you smelling? It's not as popular of a note, so you might not be able to pick it out. It just keeps the fragrance very interesting. I love this fragrance so much. Mmm, the tea gives it a little earthiness, so it's not too sweet. It doesn't smell like candy. It smells very smooth and elegant. It's a very sophisticated fragrance but incredibly feminine, which I love. That's my typical style of fragrance. The fragrances that I grab the most are a little bit sweeter, very princessy, and this princess is definitely a princess perfume. And I think the dry down is a bit surprising. It almost has a slightly powdery touch, which I think just elevates the fragrance. It smells very luxurious. Next, we have one of my all-time favorite fragrances. Cannot be dupable, in my opinion, Tom Ford Lost Cherry. And this is one of those fragrances that I love to wear during fall winter. As much as I love it, and it's one of my all-time favorites, I cannot get myself to wear this spring summer. It just isn't right. So now is the time where Tom Ford Lost Cherry will really shine. And if you are planning to pick this up, I would recommend going for the gift set because it comes with the 1.7 ounce and the little travel spray. That's what I purchased a couple years ago when I got it. It sold out immediately on the Sephora site, so I ended up having to pick it up at Macy's, but I checked and it is still available on Sephora. The set is not going to be part of the Fragrance for All event in December because it's not a full-size fragrance, it's a gift set. It's described as a warm, sweet gourmand. Keynotes include black cherry, tonka bean, Turkish rose, jasmine sandback, sandalwood, vetiver, cedar, and vanilla. I love the tart bite you get right away from the cherry. It just kind of zaps your nose. Mm, kind of energizing. It's very zippy right away. 
and a little bit spicy, but immediately smells so delicious. Some like the most fancy dessert you would eat in a restaurant. And as it dries down, it gets very smooth, delicious, vanilla. And that's really what is left lingering on my skin. I get a lot of vanilla, kind of a spicy, moodier vanilla. And I just, I love cherry almond. And this smells like the most delicious, elegant, luxurious cherry almond possible. I really wish there were ancillaries for Lost Cherry. I haven't seen any, not that I can think of. I know they came out with a candle, but I would love to see maybe a bath oil or a body oil, body lotion, because one of the main complaints that I do hear about Lost Cherry is just that it doesn't last as long. When you're paying such an elevated price point, you want it to last all night long. You want it to be a beast mode performer. And that's just not the style of the fragrance. It is going to sit a little bit closer. Now this is a classic fall winter fragrance. Another one of my all time favorites, Coco Noir from Chanel. This is probably the heaviest fragrance on the list. So I would say this leans more evening. I think it's probably a bit too bold and spicy to wear daytime, but it's a statement maker, a head turner, a wow fragrance smells so elegant and sophisticated. This to me is very black tie, buttoned up, getting dressed up to go out for an evening, could be a holiday party. It's a classic floral. Keynotes include Egyptian jasmine, May rose, Indonesian patchouli, Venezuelan tonka bean, and bourbon vanilla. Coco Noir is almost the deeper, vampy, sultrier version of the new Paris Paris. If you really like that fragrance, but maybe you're looking for the fall winter version or something a little bit more evening appropriate, I think you would love Coco Noir. They have the patchouli, the rose, a little burst of bergamot, kind of a fresh sip, but this is so pretty. The jasmine, the rose, it is Chanel in a bottle and it's a classic. This will always smell very modern to me. It is maybe a little bit powdery and I think the patchouli might be off-putting for some people, but I still think this is just such a chic fragrance. This fragrance is a fashion statement. I, when I smell Coco Noir, I just imagine someone who is incredibly put together, not necessarily fancy or expensive or really dressed up, could be very casual, but just sleek, self-assured, doesn't really follow the trends. She's a trendsetter. This fragrance is not available at Sephora, but I checked right before I sat down to film and it is currently available and it was back ordered and out of stock for such a long time. I felt bad even talking about it because you couldn't get your hands on it. Allure Sensuelle from Chanel. It's very difficult for me to choose favorites, but it's one of my favorite Chanel fragrances. I think it is incredibly underrated because, well, because it's been sold out for a long time, but also it's not as widely available as some of the others like Coco Mademoiselle. Not a lot of people know about this fragrance, but it is amazing. And I do think this is one of the sexiest fragrances from Chanel. It's the closest thing you'll find to a warm, sweet gourmand fragrance at Chanel. It is very sexy and sensual and it just smells cozy. This completely embodies fall winter. It's floral, soft, ambery. Keynotes include May Rose, Frankincense, Amber, and Patchouli. If you like Coco Noir, I think you will really like this. It's a little bit lighter. Still very warm and sensual, but not quite as spicy. And there is kind of a smooth, slightly creamy vanilla dry down. It's so pretty. If you like ambery vanilla fragrances, you will love this. It's so dreamy and it still has the Chanel DNA. You have the Jasmine, the May Rose, it has a kind of slight powdery touch, but it's just warm and soft and so feminine and beautiful. Just one of the prettiest fragrances in my entire collection. And I find myself saving it. I'm gonna do my best to get a lot of use out of this fragrance. I also felt like it was scarce because it was out of stock for such a long time. I didn't wanna wear the bottle that I had, but now that I know that it is back, hopefully they aren't discontinuing it. I can finally enjoy my Allure Sensuelle. One of the last fragrances I added to my Chanel collection and it's one of my favorites. Another incredible designer fragrance that's a little bit harder to find, or at least harder to smell in person, is Black Tie from Celine. This is one of my favorite delicious vanilla fragrances. I believe you can order these online and they do come with a little sample. That way you can try it before you unbox because then you can't return. 
it's not nearly as fun as going to a counter and being able to smell it in person, but black tie smells like a very warm, woody vanilla. It's not too heavy. I think it could be worn day or evening. It's meant to represent a fashion staple in black tie, but this is your fragrance staple. It's the perfect everyday vanilla. Keynotes include white orris, butter, cedar, tree moss, vanilla, and musk. It almost has a slightly syrupy sweetness right away. It's not too sweet, but it's definitely there, just a little bit. But then you immediately get this really elegant woody note. So pretty. It really grounds the fragrance. It's unisex, but I think if you love vanilla fragrances, you will love this. And for me, whenever I wear this, I feel like it smells very feminine on me. You wear this and you know you smell amazing. It's not too much. It's not in anybody's face, but it's just enough to, ooh, kind of turn ahead. Like, who smells, who smells so good? One of the most sophisticated, definitely underrated designer fragrances out there. And again, I think it's only because it's harder to get your hands on it because if this was in every department store, it would be a bestseller. I also pulled out these two fragrances to talk about. They smell a little bit similar to Prada Paradox and just for fun, I sprayed them all on the blotter card and I was kind of comparing back and forth. This smells so similar. This is the new Alien Goddess Intense. It has a little bit more of a creamy coconut note, barely detectable, but it does smell very similar to Paradox. But I think I prefer Paradox, so I don't know if it's worth it to even mention it on the list. I think if you like the idea of Paradox, you're not really that fussed about the bottle and you like coconut, then I would go with the Alien Goddess Intense. Still a very pretty bottle, not nearly as fun as the Prada logo, but it's a really pretty fragrance, jasmine, coconut, and then My Way Intense is another beauty. Doesn't smell nearly as close, but similar-ish in the same family, but then this has the two bros and the orange blossom. So another really great option, if you like the original My Way, but you want something a little bit deeper for fall winter, I would try My Way Intense. I really like this fragrance, but I don't think I like it as much as the other fragrances we've talked about. So wanted to throw it out there just in case, but I do think there are better options here. And here we have the fragrance that I cannot stop talking about in all of my favorites videos. It's Mon Guerlain Intense. It's so simple, but it's so perfect at the same time. It's spicy, it's a little bit sweet, it's feminine, and it's one of my most complimented fragrances. My husband loves this fragrance. So I think that makes me wear it with maybe a little bit more confidence. So I really enjoy wearing it as well. It's a warm, sweet gourmand. Keynotes include lavender, vanilla, and patchouli. I definitely pick up on the warmth from the vanilla, the floral notes. It's just a very pretty floral gourmand fragrance almost a candied flower, but not so sickeningly sweet. It's so pretty. It smells very elegant. This to me would be a special date night out or getting dressed up. Evenings, weekends, when you have somewhere really special to be, or you just want to turn heads, you know, make a great impression. Mon Guerlain Intense, one of the best fragrances at Sephora. And the final fragrance I have to share with you will likely be my next fragrance purchase. I didn't expect to purchase two fragrances during the savings event. So I've been thinking about this for a really long time, kind of putting myself on a low buy slash no buy for makeup through the end of the year. But I think my next fragrance purchase will likely be this. It's Le Cole Noir from Christian Dior. It's one of the Le Privé collection. So it's a little bit more expensive, but they do have this entire fragrance line at my local Dior counter. I remember smelling this a long time ago and thinking it was really nice. And I think I even tried a sample then. This was sent to me in a package recently. One of my Dior purchases, they included the little sample. And I've just been smelling it and smelling it and kind of revisiting and I think it's really beautiful. If you like rose fragrances, I think you will really like Le Cole Noir. I did my best to pour a little bit on the blotter card. Of course, it's all over my fingers now. Just a beautiful rose fragrance, but it definitely smells fall winter. Like a beautiful fall rose. And it's a little bit maybe leathery. It smells like velvet. 
I don't know how or why, but it just smells kind of velvety to me. And I don't think I have anything else like it in my collection. And I love rose. That's one of my favorite notes. So I think it just has to be. I don't know when I'm going to purchase this, but at some point soon, I'll probably wait for a really good little promo code. When they're giving out a lot of gifts, maybe around the holidays, that's when I will spring for it. And that completes my list of designer fragrances for fall winter. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I love reading your recommendations. So if you have any favorites, drop them in the comment section. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.